Um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you all for joining us, uh, both here at my office and virtually on Zoom. Um, today was a good day. Today was a first step in our uh, collective goals in preventing, from preventing children from being transported uh, from a juvenile facility to the Louisiana State Penitentiary at Angola. Uh, this morning, we had a conference call with the judge where attorneys for the plaintiffs, uh, attorneys for the governor's office, attorneys for OJJ, and Department of Corrections all participated. When we filed our petition on Friday, uh, we sought to have a temporary restraining order uh, put into place. Um, today, uh, that restraining order was not put into place, not because of the substantive nature of our motion and petition, but because the governor's office commitment that no child would be transferred to Angola before September 15th. Judge Dick set a trial, essentially a trial date on this uh, for the dates September 6th through September 7th. So if we're successful in our endeavors, uh, we won't have to worry about that date on the 15th. One thing that was very evident uh, is how, at least to us, how haphazardly uh, this has been put together. Uh, we issued public records requests asking for the plan. What is the plan? How are you going to ensure that these kids that are transferred to Angola's needs are going to be met? their educational needs, their sociological needs, their mentorship, their education, everything. And what we got is crickets. We didn't get anything at all. That lets us know that there was not a plan. Uh, however, Judge Dick ordered that whatever plan is in place, whether complete or incomplete, uh, should be delivered to the plaintiff's attorneys no later than the close of business day tomorrow. At that point, we are going to hire an expert witness, a juvenile justice expert, to go into Angola, look at the plan that is put into place, and see if this can work. We believe it will not. In no circumstance, in our opinions, that it should ever be okay for children to be housed at the Louisiana State Penitentiary or any adult facility. Um, at this time, I'm going to pass it over to one of my co-counsels, Mr. David Utter for a statement, and then we will take it uh, for question and answers. Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you very much for attending. Just a little agenda to run the agenda. Uh, after I give a brief statement, I'm going to hand it to uh, another co-counsel, Hector Linares uh, of Loyola Law School. Uh, he'll be followed by Tammy Gray, who's one of our national partners with the ACLU National Prison Project, and then she will be followed by the fantastic Gina Womack, who has actually been leading this fight uh, to stop children from getting transferred to Angola uh, from the get-go. Uh, I just want to comment on, on just how both ridiculous and disheartening this plan is. And to call the plan, to be clear, uh, uh, overstates it. It's a scheme. Uh, and it reminds me when I was first in um, uh, doing juvenile work in Louisiana in 1997, 1998, when then Secretary Richard Stalzer said he was going to transfer any youth in the juvenile system who turns 18 to the adult system. Uh, this guy just because they're 18. And Gina knows well the litigation that followed. Uh, it led to the Louisiana Supreme Court to say, no, uh, you can't do that because when you're in the juvenile system, you're not being convicted of anything. So therefore, you can't just be transferred to the adult system when you're 18. Louisiana continues to come up with these cockamamie schemes to deal with the juvenile system uh, and, and by, by, by sort of pushing the kids to the adult system, and it just is not going to work. It will never work. Children are different. Youth are different. A law allows for that at times, but the scheme can face it. And until our leadership actually addresses the problem in the juvenile system, and st instead of continuing to try to sort of hide the ball to transfer youth, to the adult system, uh, this is going to continue to be a public policy disaster. Um, thank you all very much, and I'm going to hand it over to Hector Linares. Good afternoon, everyone. I just wanted to say, as, a, as one of the, as the attorney who had the opportunity to actually meet with our client um, in Bridge City, uh, I witnessed firsthand the stress and the trauma that um, the state's plan um, has caused uh, for youth thinking that any day they could be moved to one of the most notorious penitentiaries in the country. Um, so that's what personally makes me so happy about what happened today um, uh, with 
Judge Dick, that we now know uh, that no one will be moved prior to September 15th and before that date, we will have the opportunity to um, show in, in a hearing that uh, first a preliminary injunction and later a permanent injunctive relief should be granted in this case. And uh, my students at the Loyola Law Clinic and I would work tirelessly to make sure that no use at all are ever transferred to any facility in the whole of Brown. And with that, I'll pass it to um, I believe it's uh, Tammy Frey is next. Thank you, Excel. Good afternoon. Thank you. My name is Tammy Frey, and I'm the Deputy Director of the ACLU's National Prison Project. We work to ensure that conditions of confinement respect human dignity and comply with constitutional law. So we are especially glad today about the outcome of today's ruling, which keeps kids out of uh, being transferred to Angola until at least September 15th. As a matter of public policy, we have committed as a nation to ensuring that children have the opportunity to improve, move past their misfits, and have bright futures in their communities. That's why we don't punish children, and that's why they do not belong in prison. Children especially do not belong in a place like Angola, which is notorious for human rights abuses. If the state cannot manage to meet the basic requirements of the more than 5,000 adult, adults incarcerated at Angola, we do not believe they can meet the even more rigorous requirements demanded by the juvenile justice system. Further, detention at Angola sends a devastating message to our youth. To be placed in adult prison, a former plantation still alive with the vestiges of slavery and racial hierarchy, tell children that prison punishment and despair is the only future that they can hope for. We pray that OJJ and the governor abandon this plan to move children to Angola. Children need, need to see that they are not the sum of their mistakes, that they can be so much more. Thank you. Uh, thank you, um, and good evening. Um, my name is Gina Womack, and I'm a co-founder and executive director of Families and Friends of Louisiana's Incarcerated Children, known as GWIC. Quick and our families have been calling for systems reform to end the state's violence against youth for 20 years now. During this time, we've not only seen the harmful impacts of youth incarceration firsthand, but we've also seen the missed opportunities of our state leaders to invest in solutions we know work, prevention, supports, and the rehabilitation of our youth. The governor's decision to move youth to adult prisons such as Angola and then Jetson, was one of the most egregious and inhumane attacks against our youth we've seen during the decades of advocacy. Again, Angola has been built on the former slave quarters, and it is a living monument to slavery and institutionalized racism. It was more than symbolic to plan to house our children at this facility and under the same harsh and violent conditions as adults. Under current leadership, the Office of Juvenile Justice has been crumbling. But instead of turning to data, evidence, and experts to begin implementing the solutions we know work, the governor has wanted to punish our youth for the state's long list of failures. Our families and youth had no choice but to seek legal remedy. While we are grateful that the judge has stopped this horrific plan from moving forward for the time being, we also know that much more work is to be done. The state's decision to move children to Angola was a clear signal that system leaders lack vision for what is truly safe, for what a truly safe society looks like. They only know how to build stronger cages to ramp up punishment and place blame onto children and families. While this is a needed move in the direction of justice, we still need to fulfill the state's promise of transforming our youth justice system into a holistic model of support and care. The court's decision simply stops us from moving even further backwards in the fight for racial justice, but we need to make gains and take steps forward. We have, as a society should also be examining the multiple and repeated failures of the system to adequately support youth. We must use our voices to create a vision for what true rehabilitation looks like. Young people are supposed to be protected and rehabilitated while in OJJ's custody. 
You need to see a new plan that ensures you are not sent to any adult facility and that they are receiving the education, mental health services, as well as the developmentally appropriate rehabilitation they need to contribute to society. And that plan should com um, include community alternatives and an analysis of each young person's case so that children can return home and give OJ the opportunity to focus on supporting young people who need a more robust services. Right now we know that OJJ is ill-equipped to offer these services even in the current facility and have been struggling with severe staffing shortages. They continue to waste money on renovations at multiple facilities, but it's not the building that is the problem. It is the system of incarcerating kids. And we've been advocating again for over 20 years to divest from the system and invest in holistic, coordinated systems of care. And we will continue that fight until every child and all children future and resist the practice that created more harm and no positive results. Thank you, and we're really happy to work with these amazing lawyers um, again for some of us. And so we look forward to our continued work. Thank you. At this time, we'll open it up for questions. Again, first from those who are um, local at my office, and then we'll switch to uh, reporters that are on Zoom. I have a question. Uh, the governor announced that only a few of the most troubled youth, including those that have been breaking out, were going to actually be sent to Angola. Um, if they're not going to be sent to Angola, then where will they be sent, and what's the plan for what's to happen next? Because residents do fear for their lives. Listen, and no circumstance regardless of what these children may have been accused of, uh, should it be okay for them to be housed at an adult facility? Um, I think it is a very slippery slope, the idea that you're going to hand select without due process, right? So this is without an even due process hearing, hearing to suggest, hey, you're going to go to Angola, that arbitrarily you're going to make this decision. I think by allowing this to happen, will have a ripple effect that is much greater than the 20 to 25 youths that are potentially on the list to go to Angola. Um, and so I think that's a problem. As it relates to what happens next or what should happen, that's a question for the state. That's a question for OJJ. Uh, that we should, they should be in the business of fixing problems that have been on the books for years and years. And now that it's come to a head, the only reaction they have is, like, you know what, we're going to take the ones that we think are really, really bad, and we're going to shove them in gold where we know they can't get out. But the fact that they have not even disclosed what the plan is, lets us all know that that's what they were doing. They don't have a plan. It's just to put them away. You said this would have a much larger ripple effect. Can you just elaborate on that? Well, listen, I, I think it goes to uh, what your colleague's question was. It, it goes to the fact that they're going to hand select a few kids and be like, you guys are going to go to Angola without any due process. Just it's going to be such an arbitrary thing for them to do. So what's going to happen when the 26th kid, the 30th, the 40th, the 50th, the 100th kid. What is the process? What is the standard of which a kid is going to be transferred? You don't have it because guess what? Up to this point, nobody has seen a plan. Nobody has seen a plan, but yet we're supposed to just close our eyes and accept the fact that we're going to take kids from a juvenile facility and shove them at, to the Louisiana State Penitentiary. That's absolutely ridiculous. Is, is the problem because it's Angola? Because... Everything that OJJ has said is that we're not housing them with adult incarcerated men. We're housing them more than a mile and a half away from, it, from the closest uh, inmate at Angola. And they're going to get, this, or the plan is to try to get them the same types of services in the, the building they're going to be in that they would be getting somewhere else. So is it just the problem that this is called Angola or is it something else? This is absolutely something else. It doesn't matter if it's if it's Angola or if it's the, the Reading Rainbow Jail. The fact that if it's an adult facility, kids should not be housed with adults. And let's talk but about they're not being housed with adults. They're being, being housed, housed at, at more than a mile and a half away from adults. Well, they're being housed at the same facility. And I'm gonna give you some practical Please. problems that we have. One, Please. one, we don't know what the plan looks like. We said that. Number two, let's use this example. Let's say there's a there is a healthcare issue with one of the children. Where do they go? There's a hospital and infirmary, infirmary that houses adult men at Angola. Are they going to go there? Or are they going to try to find a hospital 30, 40 miles away from the facility? That is a reasonable 
ask as to, okay, are these kids absolutely going to be housed away from them? Also, for those who are familiar with Angola, a lot of the grounds are, man, are manned by the inmates that are there. They tend to all of the grounds, from, the, from when the gates open up all the way to the back. Who is going to be manning the area where, where these children are? Again, these are questions that we have asked that we have not received the answer to. And so I think that, you know, it's not that it's Angola. I think any, the smallest risk that a child could be harmed by somebody at an adult facility uh, should be taken with, with maximum caution. Now, beyond that, we could talk about some of the psychological effects that this would have on children, that these kids going here, going to Angola or any adult facility, um, there are statistics that show that that is not the way to go. Matter of fact, on the books right now in the state of Louisiana, we have laws that do not allow for youths to be housed with adults. But now we're going to hand select, we're going to hand pick the, the few of the worst apples, according to the, to the governor, and we're going to arbitrarily place them there. Um, again, up, up to this point with no plan. You said you uh, spoke with uh, one of your clients today in person. Can you describe a little bit about what that was like and what his, what his uh, emotions were? Um, you could physically see the relief when I told him that there's no imminent transfer, that everything's been delayed to at least September the 15th, and we'll have our hearing. We'll have our hearing in, in court, and if we're successful with that, he doesn't have to worry about that anymore. You could physically see him sigh and, and be some sort of peace to know that tomorrow I'm not going to Angola. Well, because what are their fears? What are the youth's fears to go there? That they're going to get hurt. I mean, it, it's a very strange and different world uh, to be housed with, with a bunch of men. And I get what you're saying. They may not be in, in the same facility, but as children, they don't uh, understand that. They, to, me, to them, it doesn't matter if the closest adult camp is a mile and a half away on there, what they know is that they're going to big boy jail at, at that point in time. And the risks that are associated with that, the horror stories that they've heard from that, that is their, their concern, that they could go there and potentially not come out. So I guess my question would be, what's the short-term goal from now until September 15th? Because we're not talking about, you know, children who stole candy from a store. These are kids who are in jail for murder and, you know, crimes that, you know, these residents are concerned about. So what is the short-term goal from now until then? And then if we get to September 15th and they're still going to be moved, then it's like, you know, well, what do we do then? Well, our, our hope is that after the hearings on the 6th and the 7th, that uh, Judge, Judge Dick rules in our favor and hopefully lays out some groundwork as to goals and targets that OJJ and the state needs to hit in, in regards to how to come up with a solution to this. Uh, I, I, um, I think, though, those are questions that are more directed to our state officials and actors. Okay, what is the plan? Uh, in, in our opinion, Angola can't be the plan. And so if Angola's not going to be the plan, I hope they're working on a backup plan right now because we plan on fighting this very vigorously to make sure no child gets shipped off to LSB. Is there any backup plan in your mind that you would be comfortable with? Because if we're not going to take these kids and, and put them where they're proposing, where else, where else would, would they're suit They're in prison! Them? I'm sorry, somebody want to take that? I, I don't know who. That was LCCR. I mean, I think we, uh, I think Ms. Womack was correct. And I know we're not going to get there overnight, but we have to begin to reshape what juvenile justice actually looks like. Now, I know in the short term, we're gonna, they're going to have to find a place to, to house some, some of these kids. Uh, they're going to have to find a place that, that's secure, not only to protect the children, but also to protect the community. But the answer to that question cannot be to house them in, in the same uh, campus as, as adult uh, prisoners. And again, just the entire process is just very arbitrary that you're just going to hand select these groups and then decide to place them there without any type of due process. Which is why we argue in our petition this is in, this is a violation of both the Eighth Amendment to the Constitution and the Fourteenth Amendment. It's cruel and unusual punishment, and also there's no due process. Ben, ben's got a question. Sorry, David, were you pointing to me? Yes, I called your name out. Your name. Okay, great. My question was. Um, Ron, you mentioned that 
the state has not been responsive to record requests regarding the plan here. Did they say anything about the plan during the call today with Judge Dick? And if so, what did they say? Um, not much about the plan, just that they have one. Uh, but Judge Dick ordered them to turn over whatever that plan looks like to us by the close of business tomorrow. Wes? Uh, yes, sir. Is there any concern about the um, housing the juveniles at the Baker Jetson? David, you want to take that? Yeah, there is. There is, of course. I mean, it's a better option than Angola. Nicholas? Yeah, thank you. Um, it was my understanding that, that the transfers were going to be from, were, were kids from Bridge City, um, and that this was just going to be a temporary thing, but you guys have mentioned that the governor is saying he was gonna, that they're going to handpick people. I, I may have missed that, but um, I'm wondering if it's your understanding that these kids could be transferred from any OJJ facility, or if these are going to be kids from Bridge City. Obviously, you appear to have limited information, but just curious what your understanding is. I, I believe, that in, in my mind, certainly, that is the slippery slope that, that, that Mr. Haley speaks of. Right? I mean, what the juvenile system is doing now is trying to find a response to things that they deem problematic, that they deem troublesome, and they're going to ratchet up the punishment uh, as if ratcheting up punishment. And that's why it's so important that you stop now. Right? I mean, you're, you're already traumatized just thinking about going to Angola, just talking about it. Those are I mean, the, 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 uh, the declarations by Glenn Holt, the declaration by our client, Alan Day, so clearly that these large uh, snapping facilities uh, are not treating this as something Mostly guards, then, according to uh, the declaration. You know, it's, 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 they're already upset because now the information on them is that these are so called, you know, sort of the best of the best, and I guess Governor Ike just said it in the big thing. Uh, it's madness, and, and, and really it's got to stop, and that's, that's why we follow the ball. Thank you. Thank you. David, you have a better view of the Zoom screen, so I'm going to let you take over who on, on Zoom uh, has a question. Devin still has his hand up. I don't know if you have another question. Okay. Yeah, I, I do have another question. Obviously, um, Bridge City had its own issues that led to this entire plan. What have you heard from your client and the other folks inside Bridge City about current conditions there um, you know, since Governor Edwards announced this plan? Hector, you want to take that one? Yeah, uh, 
So conditions uh, are not great, but uh, we certainly think that they're better than uh, anything that could be offered at Angola. Um, and I, that's what I think is a big shame about this plan is that to the extent that they are going to be investing any kind of money, human resources, or anything in the Angola facility, um, they could be doing that same thing in the Bridge City facility or in one of the other youth facilities that already exist within the state. We know what the answers to these problems are. We had Act 1225 back in 2003, and the problem, uh, and for those of you who don't know, Act 1225 uh, was where we switched to a model away from the adult incarceration model to a rehabilitative model for youth, and it was working until we reinvested from that model. And we started doing things like putting people with only adult corrections experience over um, the Office of Juvenile Justice. And we started bringing in DOC uh, correctional officers to mace our youth instead of to provide them with rehabilitative treatment. So um, to the extent that this whole idea was spurred by some escapes that happened back in July, well, here we are uh, at the end of August, and there have been no escapes since this plan was announced. And I don't think that if, that if that's the big concern, then it's a relatively easy matter um, of hiring uh, more people, training those people how to deal um, with adolescents with dignity and respect and in a way that's effective and, and rehabilitative. Um, and, uh, and so I don't believe that there is a crisis that requires us, if we can wait till September 15th to move you to enroll, we can wait till October 15th and November 15th and December 15th that we can find a way to deal with them uh, in, an, in a uh, developmentally appropriate manner in OJJ in an, within, an organ, within, within an agency that was designed to deal with youth, not within uh, a penitentiary designed to deal with um, adult offenders. Another question, Jen? Yeah, last one. Um, at the press conference announcing the plan to move the kids to Angola, I believe Bill Summers said that DOC employees who've been called into Bridge City to, uh, you know, supplement OJJ staffing had used tasers and Burmese I mean, tasers and had used um, uh, pepper spray in order to uh, in a few instances in Cyber City. Have y'all heard of any other instances of that happening? And do you have any details? If so, we have no other information other than uh, what's in the declaration of law and how it's set. Okay, if that's it, we'll wrap up unless you guys have any questions here. Listen, thank you all for helping to elevate this issue. Um, thank you to all the awesome attorneys and advocates that got us to this point. We still have a long way to go. Um, and we plan on keeping this fight. We believe in this. Uh, this is more than just a principal fight for us. Uh, this is a fight to, to save the souls of our children. And, and that's why we're here. Thank you guys so much, and I'm sure we'll be talking again soon.